Hello everyone, my name is Lewis and I am the commentator for StarCraft Sports Network coming to you once again for another computer-based tutorial. Uh, this will actually be about Linux and not Windows this time. We'll be setting up a uh, Linux box, a computer with two network cards, uh, one built in and most likely the other one being PCI, uh, to be our DHCP server, our gateway, and our firewall to the internet for our entire network, including wireless users. So. Um, this will actually be pretty cool and you know doing this is actually very flexible and actually there's been some people including myself that have seen some huge network improvement um, not so much network improvement but internet improvement by doing this so this is very very cool um, this is actually going to be a three video tutorial the first one will show you how to set up DHCP and go over the concepts uh, the second one will be going over IP tables and some concepts around that and um, the third one will be about security. It's kind of optional, but it's about making sure that no one can shell into your computer, um, root can't log in, that sort of thing, you know, any of that. So we'll be going over those things. So first and foremost, we'll be going over DHCP. Uh, prerequisites, obviously two uh, network interface cards in your computer. Most likely one of them is built in, uh, depending on your system. And then um, you'll have a one that needs to be a PCI card. And then depending on how Linux decided to treat them will depend on which one is ETH0 and ETH1. So um, adjust accordingly. Um, do not follow this if you're using FreeBSD. Um, if you're using Debian or anything else Debian based, um, you might have to do things a little bit differently. For example, installing the package you'll be installing, which is the DHCP package. So um, look out for that. But if you're using CentOS, Fedora, or RHEL, then you can most likely um, follow, follow this tutorial. So anyway, let's get started. Um, also, when you install it, make sure you do not install it with an X server. Uh, we're going to be doing everything from the command line, period. Everything needs to be done from the command line. We, need, we, we do not need the overhead. So also, um, make, we got to make sure we have IPv6 off as well, which I'm pretty sure you were able to do in the setup as well. So anyway, we're going to be doing everything as root. So let's log in as root. Bam. So the first thing that we need to run um, is a command to install DHCP. So yum is the package manager for CentOS, Fedora, and all, all those other ones that are RPM based. So let's type yum space install and then DHCP. Wait a minute. Um, it's gonna it's gonna it, it's gonna take a while for me. I'm not sure about you. It might be very quick for you. And anyway, it's gonna ask you if it's okay. Put Y and then enter, and it'll install DHCP, and then that's that. So now we got to decide. Now we got to decide what IP scheme we're gonna use. So um, if you cannot figure out which one is ETH0 and ETH1, um, you can actually look at the uh, comment file of the file the uh, the comment inside of the files we're about to edit. So and that'll be able to help you differentiate between the PCI card and the um, and the uh, built in. So let's get started. So the, now we're gonna assume ETH0 will be your built in and that one will be the one that connects to the modem so we won't have to mess with that one and ETH1 is your PCI card so we'll assume that. So using your favorite editor Nano, Pico, Vi, whatever you use use it to open up this file. In my case I'll use Vi. And if you're using Vi and you don't know how to use it or you're you know you want to learn it, follow along. So Vi space forward slash etc. This is where all of our uh, files all of our configuration files go. Forward slash SYS config forward slash network dash scripts forward slash IFCFG dash ETH1. And that's the common thing I'm talking about. It tells you what kind of device you have running. So Anyway, most likely in ETH1 or whatever device you pick, it'll mostly, most likely um, that, you know, the one that's not connected to any network will most likely say the boot protocol is DHCP or, um, or even static. Not sure. Most likely DHCP. And then the on boot will say no, especially if it doesn't have anything plugged in. So for boot proto, if you're using VI, press I for insert boot protocol where it needs to be static, lowercase letters. Go down to on boot, and if it says no, change it to yes. I mean, mine was already set to yes, but I got rid of it just to show the example. So now you can go ahead and um, go back up to boot proto and make a new line. 
by just pressing enter. So now we got to start making our IP scheme. So let's type IP ADDR in capital letters, an equal sign, and then let's give us a number. We'll use uh, Shane's kind of scheme, 10.240.100.1. This one will be the gateway, so we're going to leave it with the dot one to make it easy. Enter. Net mask, which is another way of saying subnet mask. So 255.255.255.0. Enter. And then network, which is the ID of the network, which is 10. 240.100.0. Whatever scheme you're using, it needs to end with a zero. The last number needs to be a zero. It cannot be two. It can't be 20. It can't be any of that. It needs to be zero. Zero, 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 zero. And that's pretty much all you got to put into this one. So if you're using by, press escape, hold shift, colon, WQ. It, for all the other editors, press X and then enter Y and then save, I guess, overwrite. I think that's what Nano does. I don't remember anymore. So I got that down. So now to make sure everything is working properly, we can actually type in service space network, if I can spell it right, space restart. So it'll go it'll go through and shut down every interface, including ETH0. And then it's going to go through DHCP, get ETH0 and IP address, which it did. Now it's going to bring up ETH1, and there we go. If it gave us an OK, then the static address is working. So we can actually confirm it's working. Go IF config space ETH1. Enter. There we go. Perfect. Everything's looking good as planned. So now we got to edit the DHCP file. So using your favorite editor, FI space ETC, notice how all of our configuration files are ETC related. That's what Linux does. So type in DHCPD, because that's the name of the service, dot CONF, which is stands for configuration. Press enter. Now you'll be brought to a blank file. So you can move all the way down if you're using VI, using the arrow, uh, the down arrow key. Press O to make a new line. So now um, everything I'm about to type here, it'll be in the video comments if you miss it. So um, I'll be able to help you out. That'll be able to help you out. Or if or if you want to just see it on the screen, you can pause it. It's however you want to do it. So let's get let's get rolling here. The, the very first thing we need to put in is D DNS minus update minus style interim semicolon. This will make sure that all clients that connect to this PC will uh, receive the uh, DNS information from this computer. And then type in allow booting, which means any computers connected that are turned off and the inter the uh, the network interface is still rolling, it'll make sure you get an IP address allow boot p. Boot p is a uh, similar thing but an older protocol. The other thing that booting can actually do is uh, make sure um, a system can get an IP address um, before it even starts starts up an operating system which is actually good for pixie booting and I'll actually have, I'll actually be putting the, a file name option in this file for a pixie kind of deal so if you end up setting a pixie server right here this is perfect especially if you want to install Linux in four minutes off a network. So I'll press enter. Now we got to go ignore client updates. This is kind of a domain thing. So if you want so if you want to make sure that um, nothing domain based domain name based gets passed around, you might want to turn this off. Ignore client updates because we know we know for a fact we're not on a, on a domain. Um, you can actually look up more information online about ignore client updates. I think that's pretty much what it does. I may be wrong so there you go. You can correct me if, if I'm wrong. It's however it works. Next line needs to be set space vendor class all one word space equals space option vendor class identifier. I don't remember why I put this in here. It was like one in the morning but the DHCPD never complained. So enter. So now we got to put our IP information subnet 10.240.100.0. It is the same line we put in the IFCFG file for ETH1, the network line. So then we go net mask afterwards. Remember there's a space between zero and net space and then the subnet mask that we set up in that file. Space and then a squiggly bracket that's opening up on the left. Enter tab option router so we gotta set the IP of the gateway 
10.240.100.1 for my example, semicolon, enter, option, domain, name, servers. Now depending on your domain, uh, servers will, will reflect what the IPs are. In my example, these um, I actually have two, 68.105.28.11, and then put a comma to separate it, 68.105.29.11. Semicolon, and that information will be passed on to all the other clients so they can actually hit the internet, which will be actually kind of useful. Enter. Tab. Option subnet dash mask. Yes, we got to put this in again. Tab, tab twice. 255.255.255.0. Semicolon. Enter. Range. Now we got to choose uh, what IPs will actually be um, allowed. 10.240.100.100 uh, space 10.240.100.254. That is the default for most uh, standard stock routers anyway. 100.254. Semicolon. Uh, uh, enter tab. File name. Now this is the thing for uh, Pixie. If you plan on setting it up, forward slash pxe linux dot zero. End quote. Semicolon. Enter. Now most of these things are default, so you might not have to put this in, but I put I'm putting it in here so that way if you want to modify it, you can. Default dash lease dash time. Tab. Twenty one thousand six hundred. Semicolon. That is the amount of time that an IP address can be allowed to a MAC address, up until it's no longer connected when the timer goes off. Max dash least dash time. Same concept, but just the max amount of time an IP can stay true. So we'll say 43,200, 43, semicolon, enter. Next dash server, because DHCPD requires this line. Don't ask me why. 10.100, no, my, my bad. Uh, 10.240.100.1 semicolon, enter, and then close it up with another squiggly bracket going the opposite direction. There you go. Now you have your DHCP configuration set up. Now if you want to add some extra addresses, like if you want to add a, a PC to have its own IP, we'll do this. Host, and then the name of the, uh, the system, squiggly bracket, enter tab, hardware, space, ethernet, space and then the MAC address of that system you can find it you can actually find it in IP config believe it or not IP config slash all on Windows I won't be showing you how to do that sadly semicolon enter fixed dash address fixed address space and then give it an IP 10.240.100.101 so it'll always be given that IP enter close it with another squiggly bracket enter and if you're using um, Vi, press Escape, Shift colon WQ to save. Save the file no matter what editor you're in. So now it's written. So now we can see if it'll actually start up. So type in service, DHCVD, start. And if it says OK, you have no typos. If it says failed, you need to check it over and make sure you have no typos. And that's that. So now we got to make sure DHCP starts up every time we start up our computer. So we're going to use a uh, program called Check Config. CHK config all one word space dash list DHCPD so we can see that's off on all run levels so let's type chk config dash dash level so we want it to start up on level 3 and level 5 so uh, dash dash level 35 space DHCPD space on that'll turn it off and then if we run the list command we see that le run level 3 and run level 5 is on so that concludes this part of the tutorial for setting up the DHCP. Uh, the next tutorial will actually show you how to set up uh, the NAT and making sure um, everyone can actually get through the um, get through this computer to get onto the uh, internet without having problems setting up the NAT, the uh, the, the network address translation, um, all that stuff. So anyway, hope to see you in the next video. Keep in touch.